What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday, July 9th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, South Dakota clashes with Minnesota on clean energy and coal plant disclosures. Next up, yeah. ConocoPhillips sues Biden administration over oil and gas drilling ban in Alaska. Next up, moving over to the UK, labor 2030 net zero grid target feasible? Question mark. Well, really. At what cost? It's an interesting title that makes it hard to read, but this will cover some of the craziness that's going on in the UK right now. Next up, NI makes oil and gas discovery off the Mexican coast. Very interesting. And then finally, in the news segment, U.S. fuel prices set for volatile summer. Stu will then toss it over me. I will quickly cover what happened to oil and gas prices today. Kind of down, mainly due to the fact of Hurricane hurricane Barrel barreling down, pun intended, on the Texas coast in fear of some demand supplies. And then we also got a fresh new M&A deal, Devon Energy, snapping up Grayson Mill. A little foreshadowing we did in the deal, a deal spotlight episode I recorded a few months back with John Farrell. So we nice. sure cover all that. And a bag of chips, guys. As always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Hey, let's start with our buddies up there in South Dakota. Love me some South Dakota. South Dakota clashes with Minnesota on clean energy coal plant closures. As gas and electric companies transition away from fossil fuel, South Dakota officials stress reliability of resources in extreme weather. They get cold up there besides having to play polka. You know, to, you know, to try to warm up. This is really kind of interesting. A border war is between South Dakota and Minnesota on how to handle the tax policies, appropriation and pandemic response could spill over into renewable energy in the future of coal plants. <laughs> Listen to this. The Democratic Minnesota legislator in 2023 passed a, a law in 2023 requiring all electric utilities in the state to produce only carbon-free energy by 2040. Now they're just making up terms. What is Carbon free. Carbon free means absolutely zero carbon being put into the atmosphere. And how do you do that? Nuclear. Unless you're going to start, you know, going out and making nuclear. Nuclear is the only thing that can do but the that. Nuclear plants had to burn some fossil fuels and release. So it, this comes back to whole scope one, scope two, scope three. Scope. I just have carbon free. Oh, what does that even mean? Right. You know, what you have to do is plant all the farmland that you can in Minnesota and you'll be carbon net zero in Minnesota. I, I could solve this in about two and a half seconds. Excel Energy, 3.7 million electrical customers include about 100,000 South Dakotans based in Minneapolis. So that's why it is now impacting each other. It's not because one side's going to have the coal plant, have the air go by. But you know what, Michael? With over 75 volcanoes going around the world, net zero is not going to happen. Yeah, I, I love this article. We actually put the the, the full PDF that was sent by uh, the president of Xcel Energy who's over, or no, this is to who right is along. this from? This was from the commissioners over in Minnesota to right. Xcel Energy, who I bet I was in Excel. for Gary Hansen and Chris Nelson. I will admit, I, back in Colorado, I was a longtime XL Energy customer. I do like them. Obviously, regulated monopoly. They're part of the Mid-Continent Independent System Operator, or MISO right. grid. And they're, yeah, it's it's very interesting. You know, closing coal to spin up, it's, it's going to be very interesting. Listen to this. Ms. Mismo, Mizo is going to estimate that 103 gigawatts of generation will be closed over the next 19 years. 80% of that is dispatchable. How are you going to replace 80% of your grit dispatchable energy? You can't. You're going to get a bunch of mice on treadmills just losing their mind. It's still not dispatchable. Just I mean, you're going to have to go thin. harder. Yeah, you're going to run harder. More cheese. <laughs> More cheese. Anyway. All right, listen, what's next? Let's go to ConocoPhillips. This is important. ConocoPhillips sues over Biden's oil and gas drilling ban in Alaska. Michael, this is important because of the Chevron deference Supreme Court ruling. This is important. This is the fourth major 
anti-deep state legislation through regulatory action, and ConocoPhillips is now stepping up to it. A, I love Alaska. B, I love the environment. C, ConocoPhillips does a great job drilling for low-cost energy, and they need to go drill. Turn them loose. Congress did not authorize BLM to promulgate sweeping regulations that thwart and prevent the production of petroleum through the NPRA, ConocoPhillips said. Yet the rule contains numerous new provisions that elevate resource preservation over energy production and effectively turn the petroleum reserve into a de facto wilderness area, which development is outright prohibited. Here, here's the thing. Why are they doing this when they aren't saving the whales that you love to kill? I mean, you would think that the wind farms would have the same kind of regulatory actions on them. The real question is, is 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 this in light of the Chevron decision? Yes. So this so my point is, this is exactly why not having executive and, and regulatory agencies cover this stuff is critical, because if the. If if a new if a different administration was in there, this rule may or may not exist. And taking that power away from the regulatory agencies and putting it back in the proper functions, which is the Congress. democratically the democratically I'll, I'll put that in air quotes the democratically elected Congress and the courts is a much better system. But I vote I think you're going to see a lot more of these type of cases now that that Chevron decision is overturned. Obviously, Alaska with 1.8 million acres of state and federal leases that ConocoPhillips could drill on, including one million net undeveloped acres. And there's a lot that could be developed there. The, the Alaska pipeline is, I believe it's past its retirement date that they had, had projected, and it's only about 20% full use. They could still pump a lot of oil down there, and I would rather have California buy oil from Alaska and truck it down and buy it from America and know that it's not coming from Iran or China. Sorry. Yes. All right. Next article, Labor's 2030 net zero grid target is feasible. Really? And at what cost? I mean, you almost have to sound like Scooby-Doo. Really? Chris Skidmore. How would you like to have that name? Former UK cabinet minister for the energy and chair for the net zero review has stated that achieving the 2030 net zero targets is feasible. But listen, Michael, only with absolute commitment from the new labor government and the new labor government is all in on green. They are firing up every green new deal thing that they can. And here's where they're getting even, in, even worse on a different article. They're going to be putting in what's called virtual power plants. Those virtual power plants are nothing more than another control scheme so that they can have your refrigerators and everything else to shut off if you have a bad tweet. Yeah, I mean, you you already don't have AC in in, in the UK, which is fair, but now they're going to they're, they're slowly going to shut off your heat and just make you build your own fires. It's literally taking a step backwards. I mean, there's going to be a massive investment in renewable energy. I mentioned this on the show yesterday. You're going to see oil and gas companies that are based in the UK move their public listings right. to the United States stock exchanges. It's an absolute guarantee. It's going to be very interesting to see what this new administration does because this is a huge shift in leadership. That I mean, the UK obviously has been a little bit more liberal. I mean, the Conservative Party over in the UK isn't necessarily what we would oh, consider the new conservative here in the United States. But there's this has swung all the way for the first time since I think Tony Blair back in 1997 was the last time they had right. a, a Labour, you know, Prime Minister. It's going to be crazy. I love that this the 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 this guy they have a the UK cabinet minister for energy is also the chair of the net zero review. What how 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 can I want that job? Oh yeah. Whatever yeah, yeah. It, it's an it's a farce. And the uh, the World Economic Forum, the the new UK Prime Minister is buddies with the, the World Economic Forum. So let's go to the next one here. ENI makes oil and gas discovery at off Mexico coast. This is pretty cool. Italian Energy Group 
ENI opens a new tab and it has discovered in the Sorestet Basin about 63 kilometers off the coast of Mexico, it says on Monday. It's pretty cool. So they call it Block 9. 300 to 400 million barrels of equivalent MBOE. That's pretty darn cool, dude. Yeah, it's it's pretty big. They're a 50-50 joint venture partner over there with Repsol. And I've made a bunch of different discoveries off the Gulf of Mexico, but that's in right. what's called Mexican you know, in the, 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 the Mexican territory per se. Quote from NI says the overall estimate of resource in place currently exceeds 1.3 billion BOE, barrels of oil equivalent, which includes gas. So again, as we talk right. about on the deal spotlight, when you hear BOE, think scam because they're shoving in gas and gas is worth nothing. So right. if you're just going to combine, you know, but that's for another time. This is going to allow NI to advance these studies toward future hub development. Hey, you know, the world needs more oil and gas. So, I, you know, this is great. It's great for Mexico. They're going to not have to produce this stuff. Right. You know, they're just going to be able to take a royalty off this. It's going to benefit, you know, the, the world population, but specific or world oil demand and supply. But also really going to help Mexico get some much needed funds. So all around yep. great. I think it's fantastic. Hey, let's go to the next article here. U.S. fuel prices set for summer volatile, volatile summer. Here's where it gets a little funny. It says in the article that they're set for more volatile summer this year is expected busier than her usual hurricane season and already high temperatures could weigh in on refinery production. Listen to this. The Gulf Coast hosts more than 47% of the U.S. petroleum refining capacity, as well as 51% of the natural gas processing plant. Wow. So anytime you have a barrel making landfall today, who knows how bad it's going to be, but you sure, it depends if it's a category five hurricane season. They say there's what, 18 already named storms that are stacked up. Yeah. They'll find a way to, they're already finding a way to make sure this is, this is because of climate change. So uh, oh, yeah. you know, we'll keep you up to speed on that. A lot of temperatures, you know, higher temperatures this summer, though, that are definitely forecast, though, as the main cause for this. You know, you're going to see about 50% of that petroleum refining capacity shut down because of this. It's definitely going to kind of swing everything. It's going to swing oil prices, as we'll see in a bit. So, And the Biden administration, with their infinite wisdom, destroyed the gasoline reserve yep. strategic reserve up there and that is going to cause more volatility yeah no you're absolutely right this is why having the strategic petroleum reserve the strategic gasoline reserve is critical to take out this volatility but because we're looking for a political win and the Biden administration is looking for a political win they're willing to basically put the US consumer at risk of these volatile prices so they say don't bite the hand that feeds you you learn that as a young kid well we're learning that lesson the hard way oops all right well we'll jump over to oil and gas prices but before we do that guys we got to pay the bills thanks for checking us out here on the world's greatest website www.energynewsbeat.com all the news and analysis that you hear is brought to you by said website we appreciate Stu and the team who keep this website up to speed everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business you can also hit the description below this podcast and find all of the links to the articles, links to the timestamps. You can also follow us, the energynewsbeat.substack.com, link below in the article. If, if, if you haven't realized this before, we go ahead and run the show every morning, having recorded, recorded it the afternoon prior. So if you want tomorrow's news today, sign up for our Substack. We go ahead and run all of the articles that we cover on this podcast and run that first thing on the Substack so you can go ahead and get tomorrow news today available exclusively on our Substack. Go ahead and subscribe to make sure you stay up to speed with that. You can also check out the description below for dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. I, I think the other thing that is is interesting, Stu, is, is you know talking about Hurricane Barrel and what's it going to do to oil prices and natural gas prices, considering with all this refinery, you know, what's going to is going to be interesting before we get into oil prices though. We'll just quickly check in overall stock market fairly flat today, to be honest, after four or five days of, of insane upward movement, things have kind of flattened out today, only basically flat for the S and P 500 NASDAQ up about a 10th of a percentage point, two year yields up a quarter of a percentage point, 10 year yields down a quarter of a percentage point. So short term outlook actually looking fairly good. 
good. Dollar index up a tenth of a percentage point. Bitcoin up 1.1 percentage point. Still out, still below 60,000, 56,504 as we record this. Oil prices down about one percentage point as we record this here in the afternoon. 82.18. Brent oil only down a quarter of a percentage point. 85.99. Trending right along that 86 mark. Natural gas prices actually up about two percentage points. Again, mainly due to the fact of a forward looking supply, which is going to be somewhat restricted. So it's always good, always good for for natural gas prices. But getting back to to oil prices, you know, mainly why prices are are, are easing is, is we said hurricane barrel. No pun intended for pri- you know oil price per barrel. You know, a lot of U.S. refineries being shut in in ports along the Gulf of Mexico, but there's also a hopes of a possible ceasefire deal going on in Gaza right now, which again is going to reduce worries about global crude oil supply disruptions. I think the other thing, you know, this is Warren Patterson, ING analyst. While this puts some offshore, uh, he's speaking about specifically Texas and the hurricane. While this puts some offshore oil and gas production at risk, the concern when the storm makes landfall is the potential impact it could have on refinery infrastructure. Again, this this ceasefire plan going on in Gaza, it's being mediated by Qatar and Egypt. So I'm not the most confident. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Spatial expressions, if you're watching this on YouTube. Said everything. It was a. I pulled a Scooby. It was, it was a Scooby. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see there again. If nothing concrete comes from those ceasefire talks, some of that geopolitical strain is going to continue to save that. Obviously, we saw France move left wing a little bit. So again, some of this net zero stuff, like we're seeing in the UK, is going to come into effect. The only other thing that really happened today was we got a nice little M and A action here. Devon Energy announces strategic acquisition in the Williston Basin by go ahead and swooping up private oil and gas comp NCAP backed Grayson Mill Energy, beefing up its Bakken position. They go ahead and authorize share repurchases, a share repurchase program of about $5 billion. But let's go ahead and read some of the transaction highlights. Again, this is from their press release. So say everything with a grain of salt. You got to start each highlight with an acc- with with a nod to the accretion immediately accretive to financial markets. You know they they love to say that they they acquired these assets at less than four times EBITDAX, which means it was just right up there at probably three point nine nine multiple, which is pretty interesting. Beefs up their Bakken position, adds about three basically. It, their total pro forma oil production will be about 375,000 barrels per day. Goes ahead and adds about 307,000 net acres, which is about 70%, an average of 70% working interest. The production that was acquired from those net acres or via Grayson Mill was about 100,000 BOE per day, which is about 55% oil. They expect to realize about $50 million in annual cash flow savings from operational and marketing efficiencies. Yikes. Got about 500 gross locations and 300 high quality refract candidates. We've, we, we've, we've dipped so low on the bottom of the barrel now in terms of where we're going with these acquisitions that we've got to highlight refract candidates. And I don't want to, you know, I'm really trying to, to, to set up and we're definitely going to set up a deal spotlight on this, but if you've got to highlight refract candidates, no, you, yeah. you had me at the highlighting of the EBITDAX. I mean, when you talk about earnings after and excluding exploration, that's well, it's I, a that, common metric. I just think the but fact it is, but it's non gap that is a warning sign to me. I, as soon as I hear that, I go dig for certain parts of the financial. Yeah. So, Devin's claiming on a pro forma basis, their inventory up there in the Williston Basin will be extended by up to 10 years at a constant development pace of three operator rigs. Super interesting. There's a decent amount of midstream ownership that comes into play here. You know, you know, Grayson Mill owned about 950 miles of gathering systems and expensive and an extensive network of disposal and crude oil storage terminals. So that's pretty good there. You know, pretty interesting. You know, they, they were able to, to buy this for mostly cash, 3.5 billion of that 5 billion price was paid in cash and they issued about 37 million shares valued at about 1.57 billion that cash portion is financed a little bit through cash on hand and debt it's going to be super interesting uh, here's the thing if you listen to our the deal spotlight that John Farrell and I did when we covered Cord and Enterplus you'd notice that this was kind of our next acquisition target for the Bakken we actually spent a little bit of time at the end of that episode looking at Grayson Mill and trying to figure out who may swoop in and get that. We actually thought maybe it was Marathon 
All that being said, I think this was pretty obvious. You've your end cap, who's the private equity company that owns Grayson Mill. You are looking to shop this for as much as you can. I think for Devin, it's it's interesting. You you know, Devin was was floated around there as somebody who was going to make one of these mega mergers or mega deals. You know, they were talked about with all of the other big boys that were being talked about there, and instead they they settle for a for a smaller you know, acquisition of Grayson Mill. Obviously, $5 billion is it small, but it's going to be interesting to see what they decide to do from here and, and, and where they go. I think Devin, you know, they, they, they've had their 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 troubles over the years they've, they've kind of found their footing in the in in, in the last lease in, in in the most recent years the, the difference is though they're heavy in the delaware basin and now this sort of splits them i mean obviously if you're if you're at grayson mill it's probably good because they're still going to need your operational right. knowledge because they're not necessarily a huge Bakken player they are a little bit of a Bakken player but i think ultimately it's it's going to be super interesting but you know, good for everybody at Grayson Mill. I know a lot of people that work there. They do really good work. They're on the forefront of a lot of really cool stuff when it comes to technology, when it comes to, you know, enhanced oil recovery, all that stuff. So excited for that team. I think Devin had to do something. I think they were probably in on a lot of other acquisitions. It'll be, inter- you know, we'll never know this, but it'll be interesting to know where this was on the line of their potential acquisitions from there. So super interesting, but that's really all I've got, Stu. What, what, what do you got for us? Anything else to close us out? Oh, just buckle up and enjoy the Democrats implosion. And it's a sad day also as well to watch the implosion. So, you know, is Biden going to step down? Don't know. Is he going to step aside? Not if Jill has anything to do with it. I don't know. What do you think? I think if if Biden takes a cognitive test, we'll take cognitive tests and we'll see who we'll see how it all lines up. Now you're now you're playing mean. Well, he <laughs> might beat me. You never with me. You never know. Oh no, me me either. I'm like uh, Biden. I, I'm better. I'm only good between the hours of ten and four. But I'm like I'm more like Toby Keith. I'm good once as I always was. Nothing like leaving it with the Toby Keith reference, guys. Well, with that, we're gonna let you get out of here. Get back to work. Start your Tuesday. We appreciate everybody checking us out here on the world's greatest podcast, EnergyNewsBeat.com. For Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Thank you.